And this is my world now. My name is Alan Lacey, and I'm a wildlife filmmaker, cameraman, and producer. Adventure with me as I explore the amazing world of nature and show you what it's like filming the wild. Well, good morning, guys. It's the morning. Got a little cold, so felt really good inside the sleeping bag. I always hate getting up in the mornings when it's cold, but we got some big horn sheep to go find, so it's time to go. So. Tell you what, this is probably the prettiest campsite I have had ever. I mean, right along the river here. It's calm morning. Should be a good day. So, let's get going. Gotta get some coffee though. A few weeks ago, I got a tip from a photographer friend about a great place to see bighorn sheep here in Oregon. Turns out, it's only about a three hour drive to where they like to hang out, so off we went to look for them. Bighorn sheep love rugged, steep, and rocky terrain with grassy slopes and meadows nearby. They are extremely vulnerable to predators like coyotes, bears, and even mountain lions. And the rocky bluffs and terrain provide great protection from them. But this also presents a challenge when it comes to filming or photographing them, as they are often in hard to reach or even inaccessible areas. We were told that the best place to see them would be right off of the interstate, dispersed along the cliff face and bluffs that overlook the Columbia River Gorge, perfect habitat for these masters of balance and agility. But first, please go click that thumbs up button and give this video a like. And if you would like to see more videos about filming wildlife and nature or behind the scenes content about wildlife filmmaking, please be sure to subscribe to my channel and click the little bell next to the subscribe button so you can get notified every time I release a new video. All right, so now I've made my way out to the Columbia River Gorge here in Eastern Oregon. And the bighorn sheep love these steep cliff faces you can see here. Um, perfect habitat for bighorn sheep and actually there's always a good chance of seeing them as you're driving along the freeway. So we're gonna head on down see if we happen to see any. We kind of explored some of the cans around here and really didn't get a, any luck with finding them here but fingers crossed we'll get to see them alongside the freeway. It's never fun to shoot alongside the freeway though so we're gonna see if we can maybe get lucky at some elsewhere but at least we can get a couple pictures and maybe some video so it's just noisy. We've got some bighorn sheep right off the freeway here, right down low. Gonna give us some really good opportunities, but it is right off the freeway. I mean, we're talking, take a look at that. I mean, this is not the best ideal places, but we can maybe get something out of this. Well, fingers crossed, we got our, got our sheep. Let's see if we happen to get anything. Yeah, they're looking at us. Definitely curious. All right, so I'm beside the freeway here. It's really a loud and noisy, so, but I found the bighorn sheep. Now I'm filming them. really cool it's just before like mating season before the rut so the, all the rams are feeling their oats and all the sheep they're kind of working their way along the terrain kind of headed up towards actually more towards the camera so I'm pretty uh, hopeful that they'll work their way a little bit closer so we can get some better images
Normally, I prefer to be out and away from people, away from the hustle and bustle of traffic, but sometimes it's unavoidable. I honestly don't ever recommend filming right alongside a busy highway, but we found a safer place to park with a little more room that was a little ways further down the road. It's truly remarkable to see these magnificent animals in person. We happen to have found them right before the beginning of the rut, so all of the males, or rams, will soon be battling for the top spot and rights to partner up with the ladies, or use as they're called. You can tell the differences between rams and ewes by their horns, as rams have these magnificent curved horns that we so often associate with bighorn sheep. The ewes have shorter, straighter horns and are a little smaller in stature. They were still quite a ways off, and I was zoomed all the way in, which on my camera and lens combination with the teleconverter on, I was reaching just over 1900 millimeters. You'll notice a little atmospheric distortion, or this weird warping effect on the image, due to heat waves rising up from the ground, basically like a mirage, only you can see through it with the lens. When the big males face off for battle, they appear to take a page right out of a western film, walking away from each other, turning around in a dual fashion, and then lunging toward their competitor, battering their horns in a thunderous clash that can exceed 800 pounds of force. However, we were too early to see this kind of behavior, as the rut often doesn't peak until sometime in mid-November. Bighorn sheep once ranged throughout Oregon in much greater numbers, but by the early 1900s, they had died off due to overhunting, diseases, and competition with livestock. Historically, Oregon had two species of bighorn sheep, the larger Rocky Mountain bighorns, which resided in the northeastern mountainous regions, and California bighorns, which I'm filming here, occupied pretty much all the suitable habitat on the eastern side of the Cascade Range. These bighorns here that I am filming are part of a protected population of California bighorns that are instrumental in the recovery of this species here in Oregon. It is so remarkable to see how resilient these animals are. I mean, they are thriving right off of an insanely busy highway. Okay, successful time filming the bighorn sheep. Um, that was cool. First time I've ever seen them here. So now we're gonna head back to camp. Weren't able to show you the setting up the camp last night because we rolled in rather late. It was getting kind of dark, too dark to really film. So we're gonna head back to camp, get some food, kind of get something in our bellies. What was really cool though, is last night we heard some great horned owls calling back and forth across the river. In fact, they actually came next to the tree by us. And um, so we're hoping to get some uh, footage and maybe some pictures of the great horned owls tonight. Really successful day, I'm pretty proud of it. Um, looking forward to getting back out here again, maybe in an area where there's not so much traffic, find a place a little off the road, but can't beat getting out in the nature. After filming the bighorn sheep for about 45 minutes, we made our way back to our campsite along the John Day River. Just a quick 30 minute drive from where the bighorns were. Seeing them traverse the steep slopes of the Columbia Gorge was pretty amazing, but it was also a relief to leave the side of the freeway towards the safety of camp. All right, back at campsite, and uh, been here for a little bit now, but uh, there's a couple of great horned owls just off up in the uh, trees over there. They keep uh, calling to each other, so I've got the camera set up, hoping that maybe they'll take flight. Um, it's getting kind of closer to a dusk period now, so we shall see if they actually decide to grace us with their presence tonight. 
I'm starving though, so if these guys don't fly very soon, I will probably be getting some food because that is certainly warranted. So yeah, just kind of show you my basic setup. It's nothing special right now. Um, this is more of kind of just scouting to figure out what type of wildlife is out there. Um, so basically I am just shooting with my regular DSLR camera. So this is the uh, Canon 70D, which is uh, a little older now, but it's still a good little camera. It does a 1080p, doesn't do any 4K. Um, but it uh, still has a pretty good clean image and uh, I've got the, I've paired it with the Sigma 60 to 600. It's an f4.5 to 6.3. Um, sometimes I put the extenders on it, a 1.4 or a 2 extender, just to get that little extra reach, which I actually use today. Um, which it looks like it probably gives it, just using those uh, teleconverters you get with a crop sensor like this camera, you're roughly in the 900 millimeter range, which is insane. Um, Unfortunately, when it's a hot day like it was today, you get a little bit of the atmospheric distortion which comes into play, creates this weird little wobbly effect. But still, all in all, pretty, pretty successful. Um, it also helps to have a tripod that um, allows you to do pans and tilts really smoothly. And it has quite a few different stops of dynamic pressure, so when you're actually doing pans and tilts, it's very smooth. Most of the jerks you see are operator air. So it takes a little while for me to ease to it. I'm getting better at it. So eventually it'll be a lot easier, especially when I get a little bit heavier of a camera body on there. It'll be much more rigid and uh, able to be smoother when I do pans and hilts. All right, guys, come on and fly. As the sun began to fade, it appeared as though the great horned owls weren't going to give us any opportunities to film or photograph them. But then one suddenly silhouetted itself in the fading light, which was really awesome to see. It was such an amazing day, but after all of the running around and not getting anything proper to eat, I was starving, so it was about time to get to cooking. There's something to just sitting in the silence of the night, listening to the sounds of nature, and just reflecting on the day. It didn't take long until the chorus of howls erupted from a nearby pack of coyotes. A near perfect ending to the day. All right guys, it's getting pretty late. Um, just got back to my tent uh, after eating a meal, and uh, oh, cool little thing, on the way back to my tent, I saw my first ever porcupine. 
pretty insane. I um, was not prepared for it, but he was just climbing up a tree, so I had to get a little cell phone shot. So um, that was pretty amazing. And that, my friends, is a porcupine. That is the first time I have ever seen a porcupine in the wild. How wild is that? That is amazing. He is totally hanging out. Just basically saying, don't come near me. I've got the tools that can mess you up. It's okay, bud, I'll leave you alone. Just thought it would be cool to show people. That's pretty phenomenal. Uh, this place is loaded with wildlife. There's coyotes howling in 360 degrees. We've got great horned owls calling to each other across the river. Um, I actually was able to film a little bit of them. They were kind of far off, but they're silhouetted against the sunset. <laughs> really, really cool to see. Um, we also here are just a stone's throw away from bighorn sheep. We were able to film that today. Remarkable. I never knew that was out here on the eastern side of Oregon. All this wildlife just at your fingertips. So. Um, yeah, with that, I think I'm going to call it here, wrap this video up for the night, I'm going to get some sleep, um, but if you haven't done this already, please go ahead and give this video a like, give it that thumbs up, and also, please consider subscribing to this channel. If you'd like to see more content like this, go ahead and subscribe, make sure to turn on that little bell for notifications, so that way you can be notified of any of my upcoming videos, and I would love to hear what you have to think. Go ahead and drop me a comment in the comment section below, and in the meantime, Keep an eye out for another episode of Filming the Wild. Alright, bedtime. Oh.